What's up dudes, it's Nick here. Uh, sorry I haven't been very active on YouTube lately, either with my gaming or my how-to videos. As you can see, I have been at the beach. And uh, I did put up a couple little videos of me attempting to skimboard, I'm not that good at it. But uh, today I've got a quick little how-to video for you, and I'm going to show you how to make your own sea salt at home. So uh, let's get started. Okay, now to do this, you're going to need a couple things. First, of course, you're going to need seawater. See, I have it. Do not drink. Uh, I just gathered the seawater. I went out just a little bit past where the waves are breaking so that I could minimize the amount of sand and sediment and chopped up parts of fish that would get in it. And you're going to need a pot to boil the water in. And then you're going to need some method of filtering out any sediment that got in there. So what I did is I just took a couple uh, drinking water bottles. These are like Walmart water. It doesn't really matter what you use. And uh, then you take a coffee filter. Or well, you cut the bottle in half take a coffee filter, stuff it down in there, pour the water over it, Ooh. come on now, usually I do this holding the filter in one hand and I pour with the other hand, but I have the camera in my one hand now, there we go, now it's gone, and you want to be careful not to overflow it, and I use two filters at the same time just to kind of speed the process up. Oh yeah, and it will kind of create a little bit of a suction down there and seal the water in. So yeah, or periodically, if you're, if you're not just holding the filter and pouring it, you want to make sure you pick it up so that the water can drain out of the filter. And if you, if you spill a little bit, it's okay. We're mostly just trying to keep sand out, but sometimes, you know, they put silicone dioxide in salt and that keeps it from sticking so I think if you get a little bit of the silicates from the sand in there I don't think it's gonna hurt anything and it might actually help your salt but um so yeah I'm gonna finish up doing this and then I will take you to the next step okay so once you have your pot about halfway filled go ahead and turn on your burner and uh, just put it on high at first and bring the water up to a boil and you'll boil it down like that for a little while, but um, in, the, uh, in the very next step I'm going to show you guys, you will uh, reduce the heat. So um, it usually takes about maybe 10 minutes of boiling, but uh, what I usually do is I'll just check back every couple of minutes. Oh, uh, looks like we got something on the burner there. I'll just check back every couple of minutes and check the level of the water, so that kind of helps to ensure that... Uh, that it's boiling at the correct rate and then I can adjust the heat however I need to. So, yep, uh, I guess just sit tight and wait and I'll show you the next step here in a few minutes. Okay, so for the sake of keeping this video short, I went ahead and emptied out a lot of the water. Uh, the waves are looking really good out there, so I'm trying to get this done quickly and get out there. But uh, you can see it's boiling rapidly now. I'm still on high heat uh, here in a little bit. Once it starts making a popping sound, I'm going to lower the heat and boil it off more slowly that way the crystals can actually form and we'll get a good yield okay so if you look closely down in there you can see it's starting to crystallize and you can hear it starting to pop so what I usually do here is I'll reduce the heat if it's a number thing going one or low through high which is kinda like zero through ten I'll go down to about four and a half and reduce the heat now you can see it's really starting to crystallize and pop it's because the burner is still really hot, but um, it'll cool down a little bit, and this boiling rate will slow, and it'll allow the crystals to grow uh, to a good size. The thing is, you want to be careful with the heat, because you really do not want to allow the water to get so hot. I, for some reason, the salt can actually burn or caramelize or something. I'm not sure what causes that, because the actual flash point of salt is very high. But uh, if you let that burn or boil down enough, you'll get to a nice crystallized version like this. This is after a couple batches using about a half a pot each or uh, a full one of these water bottles, you know, like a full water bottle. That got about half as much as the salt. So you actually do get a lot of salt from just a little bit of water. You can see there. There, now it's really starting to crystallize. I'm going to go ahead and turn that all the way down to low. Uh, you can see you it's okay if you leave a tiny bit of moisture in there. I wouldn't leave pooled water, 
but uh, if the salt is not white, if it's still kind of a darkish color, that's actually okay because it's still really hot. So if you go ahead and spoon it out and put it in your bowl, it'll just it'll dry itself out uh, on its own. The only thing with this salt is it is kind of sticky. It will kind of clump together. So you can't really use it in a shaker, but if you put it in a bowl or you spoon it out for yourself or you use it to make margaritas, then it's perfect. So that is it, guys. That salt is done. All you do now is scrape it out with a spoon. Let's see if I have a spoon on hand. Of course not. I have a knife, though. You just scrape it like that. You can see it, it comes away very easily. And then the cleanup is really easy as well. All you do is just run warm water in the pot and let it soak. The salt will dissolve, and then you can wash it right down the drain. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe.